Guys, Trash Savage here. Um, I've got a really good triple elixir uh, deck that I got 9-0. and um, Three times, all three crowns with this deck. I'm going to start you off um, at five wins for this one. I might post another video with a full nine on there, but for now, this is it. I record, I didn't know, you know, I wasn't planning to record, but I was 5-0 and on the challenge, so I just decided to plug my iPad into the computer and start it up. It's a really heavy golem beatdown deck that I actually use in ladder all the time. It's my favorite deck. I made it myself a while back. I've been using it since the Night Witch came out. It just happens to work really well in Triple Elixir because it's a very heavy beatdown deck. I'll try to talk some strategy with it, and I want to release another video with, with it for ladder alone. It's harder to talk any kind of strategy in Triple Elixir because things are going so fast. But right here I'm showing you, here's my nine straight three crowns. Um, Starting off 5-0, and oh, so here, here goes the 6th game. Let's see what happens. I'm going to probably start off with a golem. Nope, we got a log. Get a lumberjack in there. Take care of that hog rider. It looks like he's probably, yep, he's using the, the zap, the, the log bait deck. What? I don't think log bait's a good idea in this challenge. At least I never had any problem beating it. Not really a triple elixir deck. The pump actually does work quite well in this. Some people have said, like, you know, why would you have a pump? You don't need a pump. But you can actually build up a really big elixir advantage with the pump in this challenge. People often, there's so many troops on the field that they want to use their lightning and their fireball on all the troops, and they make a mistake ignoring the pump. I mean, people were just constantly doing that, I was surprised. Is this guy actually gonna rocket my pump? Okay, good, he actually did rocket my pump, good for him. Uh, we've got a golem push start over here, getting a night witch in there, getting a lumberjack in there, cycle into the log for that hog that's coming in and that Skarmy. Took that out pretty easily. Now we're building a pretty good push over here on the right side. Um, got the lightning ready for the Inferno Tower. Lightning goes down, throw another Lumberjack in here to block this Hog Rider, get rid of that Princess with a log. Nice rocket by him, took out most of my stuff. Um, here comes the Barrel, drop a Night Witch for that because log is out of cycle. Probably going to start another Golem, push over here on the left side as that Golem slamming on the King Tower. And we have a full pump down. He's going to throw a Hog in the back. And then a Skarmy, I'm going to log all of that. Stuff this Inferno Tower with the Night Witch. Um, go ahead and throw in the Inferno Dragon, get another Lumberjack in there. Ooh, he wastes a rocket. All he hit was the Golem, no big deal. It looks like it's pretty much game over. Not even gonna bother blocking that barrel. Just gonna keep adding onto this push. And take the three crowns. So yeah, as I said, this is all pre-recorded. I, I was just doing well in the challenge, so I decided to go ahead and start recording, but I didn't feel like videoing because it was late last night. Alright, that gives us our sixth win. Let's jump into the next one. By the way, I've been watching Dragon Ball Z Super, or no, not Dragon Ball Z Super, Dragon Ball Super. Um, I actually had no idea that they were still making it, but I'm on the third season now. Unfortunately, there's no English dub yet for the third season, only the first two have it. If you guys are Dragon Ball fans, check that out. It's pretty good. Ooh, Lava Loon can be very scary in this challenge. Um, it's the one that I struggle with more than any other, I would say. I mean, Executioner and Tornadoes are the worst, but... It's just so hard to deal with the Lava Hound, because the only splash you have is the Baby Dragon, and the Baby Dragon's splash radius is just awful. It's, it's hardly even qualified as a splash. Um, so yeah, he's gonna he's beating us up here in the beginning. We're off to a bad start. He's already taken a tower. He's shut down our push pretty well. Those gold mines aren't gonna get very much damage. He's still got a bat in there to finish them off. I'm starting another golem push. Fortunately, I do have a pump down. He didn't spell my pump. So we're going to try to catch up here with some with a huge push and see if we can do a better job of defending that Lava Loon. Although, you're just kind of ill-equipped to deal with it with this deck. But clearly, you can still win because, of course, I end up free counting this guy. Um, what you got to do, really, in this situation, is you got to start building up a big push on both sides. like. Put, put very heavy pressure on. He's getting excited. He's trying to just finish me off and throw in his balloon in the middle. I'm going to start putting some really heavy pressure over there on the right side. 
I wanted to put a golem in front of all that, but since I couldn't afford it or I didn't have an encycle, it's I at least had to put some stuff up there, even if it's only dragons, to start putting some pressure on over there as that left side push is getting in deep because he had to deal with all that right side. He's getting desperate trying to throw a balloon down the middle. It's not gonna not gonna matter for him at this point. This game's over. Just adding to the push, took both towers, now we're three crowning. Game over. That puts us to seven wins. Let's see what we get here. Three Dark Princes. I rather would have had um, the new card, and I forget his name. The guy with the raccoon tail. I call him Daniel Boone. But, um, all right, here we go. He has a Sparky. That could be a little scary for us um, with our big heavy golem pushes. I'm gonna throw, one of my favorite things to do with this deck actually is a Lumberjack Baby Dragon push, just kind of as a distraction or side push to get him to dump some Elixir over on the other side because it's something you definitely have to deal with. Um, I'm not sure if I should have lightning over there with all this coming in over here, but oh well, we'll see what we can do to take care of it. Uh, that Mega Knight still did quite a bit of damage to our tower. Trying to finish that Sparky off with the Baby Dragon and it works, alright. Taking out that Night Witch, Baby Dragon mopping everything up. He's, he's got a Golem down, I've got a Pump and a Golem. We're going to start a Night Witch over here in the back to get those bats spawning. I really want to drop my ba my Inferno Dragon, but the, I need to take care of this Night Witch first. Um, dumping a Baby Dragon on that Sparky to finish it off once again. Get our Lumberjack in there to help finish the Golem off. And hopefully we can build a counter push around all this. Although that Wizard is kind of wrecking us over there. Drop a Lightning for the Wizard and the Sparky. Whoa. Here comes another Mega Knight. Yeah, this one was off to a really bad start. Throwing a golem down on the left side, I've got a pump going. That'll come to our advantage later. Um, can I just. I think a log and a baby dragon will take care of this. We'll see. Dropping an inferno dragon on the left side and a lumberjack. Get the night witch going in the back. Yeah, regardless of that sparky about the blast, all that stuff. And again, here's one of the situations where he's, he's got. He's shutting down my big pushes, so you, you gotta just start two pushes. And they both have to be serious. And once you get that going, it usually just ends up overwhelming them. They can't do anything about it. He took all that elixir, but defending that left side and the right side just went down easily. We're going to lightning this Sparky. Go ahead and log it to get rid of it so those bats and that Night Witch can get all over that golem. Oh, our, the right side push is going to finish the game for us now. Giving him the thumbs up so we know it's game over. I think that puts us at eight wins. Yeah, you guys should definitely try this deck out. I'm not a great player at this game. I, I do I have been playing this deck for a very long time, so I know how to use it, but I think it's fairly straightforward. Stopping to get our crown chest. Alright, here we go, last game. Let's see how this one goes. Dropping that much in the back, so I don't have a golem or anything like that. Normally you wouldn't start with a golem, but in triple elixir, who cares? You can start with a golem. Um, lightning for the executioner, because he's terrible, even though I won't kill him. And then I log him. I especially... Lightning log is definitely go-to for me for taking out executioners with this deck, especially if I have a golem push going. Yeah, you're taking a negative three elixir trade, but... I mean, the point of the game is not to trade elixir, it's to take towers down. So, sometimes... You really gotta get rid of that Executioner, he's gonna shut your whole push down, and it won't matter that you didn't have a negative Elixir tread. I love how fast I can get to Lightning and Triple Elixir. I hate that they nerfed Lightning now, I don't think it really needed a nerf. Trying to get the Bomb Tower or the Executioner, oh no, we're going for the Musketeer, the Executioner, and the Bomb Tower on that Lightning. Throwing an Inferno Dragon up there to finish that off as quick as possible. Got his Executioner out again, which is so annoying. Executioner Tornado is one of the toughest decks to, to beat with this deck, especially in ladder. In Triple Elixir, I feel like it's a little easier because I'll, I'll pump up and overwhelm them and start at two huge um, dual lane pushes, which is much harder to do when you're not in tri when Triple Elixir isn't a thing. 
putting that pump over there because that tower is almost dead. And we don't care if he fireballs because that other pump's about dead anyway. Um, I'm gonna go with another lightning up here for that bomb tower, the executioner. And we gotta get that log in there, like I said. Get really get rid of that executioner as quick as we possibly can. Although he's still shutting that down pretty hard. Yep, and another executioner. So we're gonna have to start a left side golem push, and hopefully by the time that hits the bridge, we can drop a golem on the right side bridge. We'll see. Pretty sure that is what I ended up doing. Yep, here comes the golem. There we go, two nasty golem pushes coming his way. He can tornado all day long. I don't think it's, it's gonna help him. Oh yeah, and this guy, I forgot, he was emoting me all game long because he thought he had this in the bag and now he's just, he just keeps wowing at how much pressure is coming on over there. He's so done for. Yeah. Beat the Executioner Tornado, which I absolutely can't stand. I think the Executioner is OP in this game because Lightning won't take him out. A Wizard costs five, a Lightning will take it out, and the Executioner, the Wizard, when he's doing Splash, it stops at whatever the first thing he hits is, whereas the Executioner, it just goes past and hits, hits your entire push and not just your tank. Yet, it takes a lightning and a log to kill him. Let's see what we get here. Ooh, 29 skeleton barrels. I'm happy about that. What else do we get? Giant, goblin gang, zappies. Ooh, 15 zappies. Well, that is the end of the challenge, guys. Um, good luck trying to stack out and have some fun with it.